They pick with ACK right now. Lulu's out, Shen is out. They don't really have anything that they want to pick early other than the Corky. And look how much you lose now on the side of H2K. But again, this support pick, Mithy's more than happy taking an Alistar from this one here. So you take the Fizz away, which I think is very key in this matchup now, because also Flex pick. Disagree though, because are you going... Where are you going to go pick that Fizz on the second rotation already? Why you would pick it? Yeah, was H2K, because last time they just waited until the last rotation until they saw the counter pick in the mid lane. They're like, we're not going to pick it early, so they kind of don't really lose it anyways, because like, I feel like they wouldn't have picked it on second rotation anyways. That might be true they wouldn't have picked it in second rotation, even though, again, they could have very easily done it. We know yeah. Ramnik can play top, we know Ryu can play true. mid. I feel like this for Origin is the safer option. You get the Alistar support, and you take away that annoying potential split pusher, potential assassin in the mid lane from Ryu. So Origin clearly high priority on it, and find giving up a support pick. At least would have been the other one, but because we know Lulex is a Lee Sin player, Origin is going to get everything they want if they take That's Lee true. Here. Lulex has been spamming Lee Sin throughout all of the playoffs. Every single game he's had a chance to, exception of one Gragas game. Maokai again for Odo Wamnes. So you've got engage, disengage, peel. But how do they round out their composition? We will find out once Origin lock in their next two. Just as a quick note, Niels' was most played champion in summer was Corky. And he had fantastic 28, 8, and 30, as well as denying it from Yarlin. I definitely want to see where that Fizz ends up going and how much Origin is willing to reveal right now to keep that Flex Fizz dream alive. So has wanted into the Maokai, up in that top lane. You get double, really a good matchup, yeah. double Trinity Spike from Origin. Insane mid game, which is where they started losing ground against H2K in the last match we just saw, where, where they fell behind. Again, at least Alistar would be the expected ones, but they're changing it up from Origin. However, a Good lane swap by H2K. If they manage to get the lane swap off and they predict the way Origin has been playing so far, that Fizz can fall incredibly far behind in the top lane. Really hard to farm as a melee range champion. Under leveled, under pressure as well. If H2K can pick a safe AD carry that can survive on their own merit, but they've locked in Jinx. Again, it's Hyanan's also second most played. Undefeated in some... Into this matchup though, this is yeah. incredibly rough. This is... I mean, the, the, what he's Borderline seeing, ballsy. What he's, he's got Thresh. What he's basically <laughs> seeing is... Sure, he has the Lantern, first of all, but he sees, okay, the Braum is here, then the Corky and the Lee. So there is nothing that is going to directly hide and get on me, and then, except for the Fizz, which is the one who can flank onto him, get the fish connected, and then you can take down the Jinx. But there is decent protection in the Mauka and the Thresh to keep him alive. So the weakness is flanks on a team that HK has not been able to defend their flanks particularly effectively this series, on Lulex who's not buying Sidestone on Lee Sin this series. Uh, I'm not quite sure belts. if I agree with the only target being able to connect to the Jinx being that Fizz. A problem Q flash, Corky Valk in, offensive cocoon can all connect on the Jinx enough to just immediately lock her down, but it's done. Yeah, boys. Okay. We I will see Ryu expand his champion pool yet again. I like it. Tell me why. Just a lack of wave though. But H2K have have already signed the paperwork that says like if we fall behind, we're dead anyways. <laughs> so we're just gonna go all in, no wave clear. Yasuo, deadly combination. They have a lot of setup for it. Okay, I like it into when it comes to like Corky Elise because the long range they're gonna provide the cocoon coming in. Problem is again, you're blind picking it first of all, and second, you have no Jinx. Yasuo is your two carry, so you're extremely low on magic damage. You do bring some armor penetration from the Yasuo's ulti. But, as you said here, late game scaling-wise, yeah, yeah, it looks great, champions. But I'm more concerned about what's going to happen in the mid game here, because Origin is looking very, very strong in this mid game already. And I'm not sure that Yasuo and Jinx will have time. That's true. It does pose a bit of a question in terms of the magic damage to, uh, department, especially when Fizz can all kind of get a free frozen heart too, that will be ultra efficient as well. Fizz looks to be going mid, mid with the top lane Nar picked up. However, I do like the zone from the wind wall. They have triple knockup set up. It's a bold blind pick. The only other option would have actually been that Oriana, really, that you could really blind pick in this scenario. Which would also add wave clear for it your team. It would make a well super rounded. meta game, right. standard composition. But H2K, I think they kind of realized we need to go all out and snowball our lead with some really, really oddball picks. Because otherwise, if we play on an even level playing field, Origin will just outsmart us. Such a risky comp because now all you have is basically we're gonna hard engage onto you. So the Jinx is gonna be stuck in the back line on her own, or well, Kissing is gonna be next to it, but this AP Fizz, as we mentioned, the flank is gonna basically one-shot it. Unless you're playing around getting the reset on the passive and trying to clean up fights. 
So H2K running a super risky composition in that sense. But we can almost say the same for Origin over here. I mean, we got the Fizz in the mid lane. They're going to rely on the 1 3 1 setup on their side now, this game here. So uh, a lot of changes in the pick and ban phase. And talking about Origin in terms of the changes, first time Fizz in the mid lane. First time Gnar up top for Soaz. We need to see how well Origin are going to play around the Gnar bar. How do they handle the ultimate? Can they use the teleports effectively and will not be able to split push? What we've actually seen uh, last week in the quarterfinals, what we've seen from the challenger finals, when a Nar gets ahead of Maokai, they just go full split push yep. and are nearly unstoppable. Definitely with that Black Cleaver, armor penetration build. However, it does make it very weak in team fights. So we'll have to see what approach Orange is about to take. As we jump into game four, this could be the game that sends Origin to the finals. Or one last chance for H2K to push this series all the way. And H2K have picked an all or nothing team composition. What better way to set a stand? I do think Origin can also split away from that 1-3-1 one, one composition and run a simple 4-1. With Fist split pushing later on, yes, he won't have to uh, teleport, but then you have a really good setup where you have Poke coming out from the Gnar and, and Niels and Corky. And if a Brown Q ever gets connected, it makes it so easy to follow up on any damage. So you can really have good control around objectives and have a flank from Xpeka come in. The problem is, if you have your Gnar sitting with your team, playing around Mega Gnar becomes way too easy for H2K because you have full vision of the Gnar at all times. So that's one of the reasons we want to see him normally sitting in that side lane, stack it up and then he TPs in gets the Mega Knight going when the team fight starts. But Origin, in terms of engaging, this is what I highlighted with the Jinx pick for H2K. Is if you look at it, you mentioned how they can flash Q from the Braum mm -hmm. as a potential way of engaging. Otherwise, you're looking at the flash cocoon. Not reliable ways True. to start the fight. And that's why the Jinx pick, I can understand it from Janin saying, you know what, I'm looking at what they have to start fights here. As long as I have flash ready and I can position properly, I can dodge around this and then be a bit more a cleanup tool and a tower pusher. I am a big fan, however, in 5v5 scenarios of Boomerang, Winter's Bite, and Cocoon. Throwing all three out if one connects, facilitates the other. And with so many skill shots, somebody is bound to get hit <laughs> by at least one of them. That is the rule in my Soul Q game. You can hit the Maokai, though. He's going to be like, well, <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's see how good Odoamna is at eating skill shots. As long as Janen keeps up his normally very strong positioning, it's going to be Peke and Soas coming with flanks. That's going to get to him. Otherwise, he should be okay. Because H2K is turning on the power the other way. They're going to go towards the Nils here with the knockups from this Yasuo here and try and turn it around on Origin. So the first two games of the series, we had lane swaps. The next two, we have standard lanes, albeit this time it's Australia. They've swapped. The duo's up top, and eventually the top laners will head their way down bottom. Looks like Soaz is already in lane, whereas Oduwame is still holding Lulex's hand for the time being. And this is also why I think their early rotation fizz from Origin was fairly smart in, in the sense we know it can be a flex pick. So what they did was they saw first the Maokai and said, okay, we could take Fizz top now and just run double Trinity Force, Bruce of Fizz. Then they see the Yasuo get, get locked in the mid lane as a blind pick. They're like, okay, we're going to change it now. We still have that option to swap it down mid and clearly want to take that skill matchup to Assassins once again and then pick the Gnar instead as the also a split pusher, we can say, against the, the Maokai. A couple nice trades here from H2K, really using that double range advantage against the melee range. Uh, support on the side of Origin in that brow. So they get a bit of a sustained lead. Now the lane stays even though. A bit of a difference in the start as well. Soas went down immediately. Oduamna was dual jungle, giving his jungle a little bit more momentum, but then sacrificing his teleport in the process. However, this should mean that Lulix now stays on even footing. Hang on, hook into Flay. Double Flay. Concussive blows about to get procced on Hyanin. And it's actually Hyanin that's forced to blow his flash. And if you get connect on Winter's Bite, AD carry almost always has to flash. You know, as I was talking about, at least super sustained in the jungle. Luik should be sustained enough. This opens up for early ganks. Wow, that was a flash playful trickster. The Venom is Fang. It's going to come up. First blood, amazing. That dash from Ryu secured the, the kill for Origin. Great early gank. Snowball, the assassin in the mid lane. How is a Yasuo going to farm if he falls behind versus a fist? He can always get engaged on another. Hooked on to Nils. Good trades. That's a flash and ignite. No heal. So many heals been used. I don't potion. know. Potion burning. Neil survives. Now you can see why Kissing is at Thresh banned from him. Three games in a row. And just the setup they have with the Jinx. You have the lantern. 
That gives her some mobility, it gives her almost a gap close at least to escape. And then at the same time, the hooks into the traps are now amazing. He's looking for more, TP as well. Death Sentence connects onto Mithy. TP's being channeled from Soaz. Defensive flash, there's lantern. the Lantern, but it's a two-man boomerang. Soaz is trying to get hyper. He's got it once. The Repel, not gonna follow for a target, and H2K get away. I like how Hyanan was waiting, trying to kill Mithy there before he took the Lantern out. Good control though, by I mean, Kasing standing on Max Lantern Rage. Gets Hyanan out, Summoners are blown though, so... You can see a lot of volatile ganks coming out when these jungles revisit these lanes that previously blown their flashes. Really the key thing for Kasing. Didn't want to try and join in and killing Mithy. He's like, no, I'm instantly just going to back away. I am the guy who gives you the capital. Loser. I'm the guy who's going to save you. Gets the lantern back. Mid lane though, Pekka got that early kill. But keep trading. Now last game, we saw a very good performance from Ryu on that Fizz. I just want to highlight how Peke managed to get that first blood. He got onto Playful and Tricksters, and as he was landing, he flashed forward, carrying on the damage. This surprised Ryu and actually facilitated that gank, so really showing that he mastered his champion is not afraid to use his flash offensively. Crepo, it surprised me as well. And we're gonna see the supports, this time both roaming to the mid lane. Mithy, oh, not gonna connect with that death sentence. Sorry, Kasing, not gonna connect with the death sentence. Mithy is in the middle lane, both with Relic Shield and Tier 1 boots, and both already moving down to join their AD carries. Hyanna and Niels, they've swapped, headed down to their regular lane of choice. And we might just see later on in this game here how both teams once again swap the AD carries to the mid lane, sit and face each other, and then we're going to have these split push wars, the Yasuo into the Fizz. Late game wise though, once Fizz gets the Hourglass especially, I really want to put it heavily in his favor. As long as the Yasuo doesn't get to go one-on-one -on -one against Soas, Origin is going to be fine doing that. And then we get these big team fights later on where the flanks need to happen from Origin. And this is something we haven't even seen this entire series. Very early grouping up from Kasing and Lulex working on their vision together was lacking the past few games so far. Deep pink ward gets placed. It's very hard for people to spot that. That pink ward very often survives more than five minutes. Could be crucial into spotting Amazing. Amazing right now is on the left side of the map, so Oduwamu will have to be careful because Lulex is controlling the right side of the map. By process of elimination, they know that he's not on the right side, therefore he has to be top lane. Amazing is top lane. And not gonna find anything. And we need to see whether or not Lulux and Kasing can keep up that level of deep vision. Kasing, uh, sorry, Lulux gonna steal some of those Gromps away and maybe look for a play down bottom. If he could get level 6 there, he can actually dash into the lane from behind and kick Nils or Mithy forward, open up a very, very Unpredictable gank. We'll have to see if Amazing can, can recontrol his jungle, but it seems like they're dividing the map up left side and right side. And now with Amazing invading on top side, he knows he's not there instead. It connects! Kasing forces the flash from Niels. That was so close. Lulex didn't connect the Sonic Wave though. He flashed through the play actually. Very, very good, well timed flash by Niels. Any second later or earlier. Probably would have resulted into a kill. Give me the instant uh, vouch though from Corky instead when the hook is flying in, in the air. Yep. To just dodge it and obviously save your flash. I'm not sure if he was expecting Mithy to take it, but obviously he has no flash, and that would have resulted in a death. Instead, though, top lane, we know how well Nard is doing into Maokai. Soas is going to be a bully in this lane. He's going to keep doing it over and over. And look who's here. One of the best junglers in the game at tower diving. Odo Amner, you are in big, big trouble. Here comes the amazing Spider-Man. And they get themselves a kill. Just so well executed. And obviously they saw Lulex commit for a play earlier on the bottom right side of the map. This leaves top left side exposed. Odo Amner should have been expecting that gank. Because it was wiser to base or even teleport out. Lulex needs to fish in the mid lane. Sonic waves a minion. Not going to get in range for the Dragon's Rage kick and Peke makes it out. Let's look though at how Origin has played for the last one or two minutes where they didn't have vision of Lulex. Once Amazing invaded into the topside jungle and saw there was no uh, Lee Sin here, the camps were alive, he knew he hadn't been topside for a while. He called it, the bottom lane stayed very, very far back. And instead, it also allowed Soas to play the bully, play aggressive top, you saw him jump forward because Amazing was nearby and they knew Lulex was on the bottom side. They used that information so well and in the end, they're the ones getting the kill for it. Now previously, the jungle was divided the map left to right. But right now, Luix was the first one to get that blue buff on the side of Origin. If he returns to Blaze, hands off his blue buff. Uh, potentially even to Maokai right there, since Yasuo obviously doesn't need it that badly. We could get a, a big buff advantage here on the side of H2K on the second round of buffs. Yeah, we did see Luix stealing Origin's blue a few seconds ago. Armed himself up again. A CS lead over Amazing for this particular match. 
Ryu also with the CS advantage in the mid lane again versus Peke. We know that Peke now has access to Chumma Waters and assuming it doesn't get Windwalled, has the ability to all in. From Corky, spikes pretty hard actually at level 6. If they can connect Winter's Bite, there's the immediate follow up from the Glacial Fisher. Also, Corky puts out a tremendous amount of damage when targets are CC'd because it's so easy to land Phosphor Bomb, get a proc from Sheen if he ever bases and buys that, get a couple rockets in the face, and eat. you can straight up just focus Flash here as well because Jinx doesn't have the counter damage to really finish you off because you can always put up the shield from Braum as the ulti connects and negate most of the damage. I want to see what else Mithy wants to do on Braum though because Alistar was open, would have fit in extremely well when it comes to trying to dive on 2H2K here and enable the Fizz and, and the Gnar. Mass amounts of CC coming in, fantastic dive potential with Elise Alistar. Up for the Braum instead. Not against any poke really on the side of HK where we've normally seen the pick come in. Or against or in compositions where you really want to protect your backline, which is not the case for Origin either, because mm -hmm. Nils is gonna handle himself. Four people coming bot lane. Like the mana bars, Niels probably just had to Valkyrie out, so you know Valkyrie available for him. That's a two-man last breath, and Niels is already down. Teleport started from Soas. He's opted to cancel it. Ryu is looking for more. Glacial Fisher defensively from Mithy, and Ryu grabs himself a kill. Oduwamne looks like he's going to get run down. Soas is going to go mega nah, and he wants to. Doesn't even need to. He shut down Oduwamne. Yeah, just double checked and pre-facing that play was a zap into Hook that forced the Valkyrie. That put Niels under his tower with no flash. Huex kicks immediately because it doesn't matter what direction you kick him in. Anyways, because Yasu will take over that knockoff with his ultimate. Very straightforward dive. Miffy drops too, so really nice play. However, this leaves the mid lane tower exposed and Origin open up the map. And really the big problem here for H2K, despite having such a good dive on the bottom lane. Soros gets another kill top. Last pick in that NAR, Odom is saying, you know what, I'm expecting to be a fist top lane, I should be able to handle this matchup a lot better. Instead, he's in so much trouble in this game, he's been shut down completely, he has to delay going Righteous Glory, just to build up some more defensive stats. And yeah, as we see Origin pushing that map lead even further by picking up a Dragon. I just want to touch on that point on Odom yet again, because ACK does not play well from behind, because Odom is a player, when he's put behind, he seems to fall deeper into the pit instead of crawling out. We've seen a couple of games where he just kept overextending and just kept getting ganked, and Soas should be a player that can punish that very hard. So we'll have to see if H2K have fixed that somehow, get him back into the game, because else he'll keep getting bullied on these high lanes. Good move from Origin here, taking down the bot lane. They have multiple members on the bottom side, even Soas without teleport. Instead of him staying top, he moves down to another lane, so you have the potential of five members nearby, and also you start taking over the jungle and push in a bit further, so tower. Will be traded though, Ryu's gonna get the top lane. HK need to get a tier 2 tower somewhere, or the tier 1 in middle. Potentially the top lane tower, but even more vision control in the enemy jungle. They need to get something out of this play, because otherwise, you're simply getting out-rotated by Origin. Origin is already knocking on a tier 2 tower. Four people here. Uh, Oduwana had to flash. Maybe another tower for Origin. The rest of HTK is still somewhat stuck. In odd places on the map, Kasing and Hyanin are there. We do see the Super Mega Death Rocket goes out. It doesn't do a lot. Flame Chompers are splitting them up. Odoam is in the middle of the fight, but Hyanin is now being focused. Glacial Fisher comes up from Mithy. That knocks Hyanin up before he gets knocked down. Odoam will get stunned by the concussive blows. But here comes Lulex. He needs to find a target. He's going to look for Amazing. Ryu will find himself a kill. It's a one for three. And Origin got a tower with Soas joining the fray. It's an easy win for Origin. And we were wondering why Bram over Alistar, but it paid off that fight. He put up the shield as the Jinx ultimate came in. Zero damage, then applied passive on two different people. They got stunned at the same time. That is the power of Bram. You can apply your passive on multiple targets at once. Glacier Fisher, once Tjarnin is trying to reach the backline of the fight, he got knocked up and popped immediately. Miffy single-handedly won that team fight for Origin. Fantastic play and really, really big lead already for Origin. Only 14 minutes in. The only saving grace for H2K is Ryu on this Yasuo. He took that tower up top. He's got a 40 CS advantage and nearly 1,300 gold, which we'll talk about in a moment. Here's that fight. All right, watch it again. First flash blow. Now, keep your eyes on Miffy. He's going to put up the shield to connect the Jinx ulti with it. It obviously does zero damage. It still does the AoE, but zero damage on Miffy. Puts it up, does nothing. Now he's going to walk in zone Hyarin. He's applying passive on multiple targets in the fight too. One on Odo one there, one on Hyarin. Hyarin is face checking into Miffy, gets glacial fissure. Because Sing still has a passive of him. Oduwamne still has a passive of him. Double stun here from Braum. Luis comes in, can't connect with anyway because Yasuo's not here. They find amazing. Yeah, that pick is definitely paying off for them. 
melee range ADC is the deadest. Yeah, Jan not really <laughs> making it very tough there. Moving straight take into a second it. To, did they take a second but, to Fisher. <laughs> but I was wondering why he was moving around like that. Instead, the Origin still full control. Oh, no, I'm the, he's a keep getting gang. Yeah, I'm taken down. He's yeah. going to go down. Lulex. No, he's oh. still alive. He manages to walk away. Odo on this survives. Death Sentence doesn't find a target. As so as teleports onto a flame chomper. I'm sure I saw a smiley there from Jinx. H2K. They hold their inner turret, but they lost their blue. Oh, okay, oh, oh, oh. sniped. That's a dead spider. Someone hit the bug spray. Hyanin's on the board. H2K now looking to fight. Ryu forced to flash defensively. Glacial Fish is going to come up and slow Hyanin as the Narar stuns Ryu against the wall. Zap comes out. Kasin gets a death sentence, but it simply does not matter because in the end, Origin look like they will get this tower. Minion Wave is conga lining in. And unfortunately for OG, the wave clear from HTK is good enough. HTK needs to realize that you just had a 4v4 fight down bottom lane without Soas. Now you have one with Soas. This guy is extremely fed. So you cannot just dive onto him normally. These fights would go in favor of Origin first. They're trying to get old Ahmed down. Stays alive. Ludix with a nice kickback on Amazing. Could get in the last execute. And then we get the snipe, yes. But then is HTK trying to see if they get more kills and then realizing how strong the rest of Origin still are. Facebook have to keep using that kick defensively though, that eliminates a very <laughs> big part. Small Spilings could have caught that one, come on. Part of their combination, which is the kick from Lee Sin into the Asu ultimate, and that's what they were really looking for. Luex has to work on his bowling skins, skills, knock a couple pins up at the same time, AoE ulti from Yasuo, followed by Windball, and in that time, Hyanan should be able to do damage untouched, but then he has to stop face checking. That's the fancy one, then that's the boring one where your marker points on click on a target and presses Q. And then you knock them up and hopefully that could be enough for H2K. True. Yeah, but he's not gonna survive long enough. Because that, in that's 16 that's minutes, one job. Odo Omnis yeah. only got knock someone up, please. A catalyst and a ruby crystal. Um, Lulex is still farming up the necessary minerals. He's one ruby crystal away from a very famous song. But for HTK, they're down in gold, they're down in kills, they're down in towers. Like, they need to get some power, maybe from Ryu finding a pick, maybe from stalling until Oduwamne can become a frontline. Well, we're gonna have a dragon fighting coming here. Source is no TP, that's why he's not in a side lane. Early sunfire for him, so full focus on getting split pushing power and also a cheap early item to make a bit stronger, spike a little bit earlier. And no magic damage for the side of H2K. Different approach. In itemization, though, when we see Nars fully spec into offensive split push, we've seen, we've even seen Blade of the Ruin King True. over in LCK, but didn't really work out all that well. But usually they go Black Cleaver, but so I'm saying, okay, I'm building more for team fights. I'm already wi winning my split push. Why spec into offense when I can just make it so hard for people to kill me? Still push with that Sunfire Cape, so good adaptation there in terms of item builds. Yeah, and we've seen other adaptations as well where you have like one or two tank items first and then maybe as a third item, we've seen Mr. Chachi do it yep. in the quarterfinals. If you want to then go back to your 1-3-1 setup, but definitely with the fact he's been winning his lane so, so hard, no need for that Black Cleaver, but easy Dragon for Origin. Miffy build a Glacial Shroud, it could go into the Harbinger, but I think it's more going to a Frozen Heart because it's just ultra efficient to build it. As a Braum, when you're dealing with a Yasuo, who you, you can then slow down in terms of attack speed, also just build raw armor and you can peel the Jinx. It takes Jinx an incredibly large amount of time to peel through a Frozen Heart, shielded up Braum, it's pretty much impossible. Just another great reason for Soas to rush early armor items. Instead of going Black Cleaver, don't go play the Run King or anything. No, if you just become nearly unkillable, for Yarnin in these fights here, you're just gonna zone him one-on-one -on -one so easily and it's gonna be all about can you avoid Ryu one-shotting Nils basically in the fights. Traditionally, in League of Legends history, when a team that has a single damage type with relatively limited wave clear falls behind, it becomes exceptionally difficult to pull it back. You then put that exact team with that exact team comp down 2-1 in a best of five, H2K have one hell of an uphill fight ahead of them. Got to worry about potential dragons coming in. Origin got them at an okay time. It'll be about four or five minutes for the next one. That's going to be the third. Now the last mid game though, devolved a bit into a solo queue-esque situation. If you played enough solo queue, you know that 2,000 gold is not enough to net you that victory. Nor is Watch five. enough LCS to know that crap. Or 5k or 10k. So with a good Yasuo play here and there, Ryu can definitely swing this game back into his favor, because obviously there's armor penetration on that ultimate. So 
you can never really out armor Yasuo because eventually he can deal a whole lot of damage. But then he needs to find its opening and dodge the CC. And his target's gonna be the AD carry, who's yep. hopefully not stacking armor later on. We have seen Brandon Tome a few times. Tribute to Genja. Other AD carries Genja is so the Time Lord. He knew what was gonna happen, but <laughs> he was waiting for this game. <laughs> <laughs> game four in the playoffs, semi final. So, we're hitting 20 minutes now, and Origin has slowed down the tempo. They did get the previous dragon. They are doing the 1-3-1. Doing to H2K what H2K did to them in the previous game. And Ryu's going to go all in on Pekka. He will find it with the help of Lulex. So, as starts the teleport, teleport used. cancels it. That means Oduwamne has teleports available. Origin Touch. lose the mid lane and back away. A big mistake from Pekka. Flash up, they didn't use E, I presume. Probably just got connected by Yasuo and yeah. didn't expect the ulti. Lulix came in and followed up with some heavy, heavy damage. And the worst thing was his team had just moved over to try and secure the rest of the jungle because they were timing the wave he was pushing down and then he gets caught out and dies. This is going to delay everything for Origin because now it buys time for H2K at least to shove out the lanes. You can see top lane Ryu. Someone needs to go back <laughs> and worry about him. It's going to be Source on the way up there. Good sidestepping from H2K not to get caught by that Winter's Bite. But with Teleport on Oduwamne and it on cooldown for Soaz, H2K have an opportunity to make a play in a side lane. And there's a couple of deep pink wards hidden well inside the jungle of Origin. Origin actually haven't been in that jungle too much lately because they've been counter invading. That initial pink ward is still alive, so we might actually see later on Teleport from Oduwamne. Perhaps even with home guards. Need the home guards. Very early for him. If he's going to guarantee getting in that back line, setting up real for the perfect ulti onto someone like Nils. Finally though, that one pink ward is about to be spotted by Mithy. He actually cleans it out. So that at Pink Ward survived for a very, very long time. I've asked the observers to confirm how many minutes, Crepo. We will give the, speak the same updates language. shortly. Gotta love those vision words. Talking about the time and talking about the slowdown in tempo, Oruwam has been able to finish that Righteous Glory. It's not the greatest of tanky items. Actually, it Mithy is an initiation tool. Mithy told Amazing, he's like, guys, I found a deep Pink Ward. Can we check out brushes, please? Amazing immediately turns around. Let's find it too, so. Teleport plays from behind. Severely limited right now. H2K stuck in their base. Keep your eyes on Ryu. He has to make the play. We're most likely just going to see Origin say we don't have to risk any tower dives. We don't have to overcommit in our split pushing. We have two dragons early on. Wait for the next one to spawn. Secure that one. Then move all division over to the Baron. Or you can do the Baron first. Now there's one minute 40 on this dragon here. Play around those objectives. Force the face check instead. Ryu does not get caught by the Chum the Waters. He's looking for the knockup. Does decide to engage with the last breath as Oduwamne used his teleport Ooh. advantage to come in. So as we'll go Mega Nar shortly. The focus is Xpeka, but in a 2v3, it's H2K that are running for their lives. Ryu says, peace out, bro. Do not want. Glacial Fisher comes down from Mithy as all of H2K have started to group up. The death sentence connects, but it's H2K that are sentenced to death. They've lost two at the cost of none. Kasing will be the next to fall as the cocoon from Spider-Man connects. Amazing, four, two, and two. So it's basically just unkillable, stacking so much armor. We saw the damage rate to Cape Valley, touched him. He gets the mech on art, they turn the fight around. Two versus three from Origin. They didn't have to go for any plays there, but still feel like they could maybe catch out Ryu. And even when multiple members showed up, they were still strong enough to win. And that was an insane win ball from Ryu too. He played that fight almost perfectly, hesitated a little bit whether he should go in for that potential knockup. Now we have Luex, he has to go for the Hail Mary, still blind. Uh -huh. Niels catches the Sonic oh. Wave and then catches the kill. 2000 HP, Flame Chompers are up. Yonan gonna decide to back away. Baron should be secured here by Origin. Will there be any exit kills? Kion and forced to flash over the wall and OG get out. Let's see it again. Origin with small trap source waiting in the bush and then now you see three guys for H2K. Look at how tanky Soas is. It's pure physical damage and then a Maokai who's under farm, under level, dealing a little bit of magic damage and that's not enough. And once you can start taking these fights, on the side of Origin, you buy so much time for your team. Beautiful ulti from Mithy. That's two kills, three even in the end. Into a Baron like Origin, composition-wise, have so many ways they can play out this game now. 
And the amount of time that Sora has managed to buy cannot be understated because if you watched your minimap at the start of that play, they were coming all the way from the mid lane. Mithy even managed to pass super aggressively because of how well Sora was keeping them busy with his one dimensional item build on Nar. Didn't have to go for the fancy black cleaver. What I will want, we want you, bro. No, I will just simply win the team fight for my team. Honestly, barring the game three, Soas has been performing fantastically throughout the series and definitely has been carrying the early to mid game for Origin. Even more impressive when you consider this is his first gnaw of summer. And he will need to do that if Fnatic expectedly win. He'll be facing up against potentially Huni in the finals. Definitely need to have his uh, top lane game on point. Definitely the case for Origin because with the lead they've accrued and the advantages they've built up. They look to close this series out 3-1. We're getting nearer the time the NA LCS semifinals was going to start. So welcome to all our NA viewers. We've missed a few fantastic games. And Origin now I need to demonstrate their ability to close and not run the risk of getting cornered by Ryu because a Ryu Hail Mary is the only thing I see that can pull them back into this. It comes very telegraphed though at this point. I need to burn through like from no, you can even sacrifice one of your members to the Blood Gods and you will still win this siege. I just wonder what happened in the pick and ban phase for H2K when they decided we need to blind pick this Yasuo. It's going to be the best option for us with the setup we have. Again, we mentioned how the Jinx, there were so many things that could flank, but then we could see how Yannick could maybe decide to stay alive and therefore you could pick it. But then you don't pick in the Yasuo with it. Because then, you just, again, you're just stacking physical damage. You have, you have a composition that can only do one thing, and that is jump in, Assassinate a target and get a reset, and you need to have the lead to do it because you get your no proper wave player, you have really no ways of getting back into a game. Origin, however, do have a way to get out of this game, and it's with the Baron empowered minions, it's with a top lane inhibitor, and a 9,000 gold lead. Miffy's so far ahead that he actually doesn't have to finish that frozen heart. He says, okay, I'll just go Harbinger. Braum doesn't really value too much from AP, so the, the Amptomes in that build completely wasted, but he just wants to buff up Niels even more because he's just too hard to kill. And even if they get through him, eventually, then the fight's probably already won, so... Bit of an adaptation in his build there. We also saw Origin securing another blue buff on their way out. I believe that's the third blue in a row they've stolen from H2K. Reuse Yasuo, reuse... Last breath in this series is simply not enough. And this could be it. This could be the final minutes of our first semi-final of the Summer Split. And Origin, despite the veteran players in their roster, this is their inaugural team debut in the LCS. And it would be a final for them as well. So as is teleported in, take inhibitor turret. Here's the fight. A play will interrupt the hop. So as is going to go Mega Nar shortly, and he's tanking up H2K. Neil's a mythy. Training a couple blows in here, in here before they back out. So tanking that front line from Soas. Jumping in aggressively, zoning people away. Not gonna thread no arm though. Instead, he's going for Jinx. Oh, Hyanin's going to go down. The Lantern's not enough. Soas is on a rampage for 0 3. Chum the Waters gets blocked by the wind wall once more as we see Ryu trying to get on the back line. It's actually Odo Womne that picks up the kill on Mithy, but it will not matter. The damage dealers for H2K are down. Origin have super minions almost on the steps of the top lane, and this could be the final push. The cocoon connects onto Lulex. Amazing. Does get caught by the death sentence, but he's simply too tanky. Odo Womne takes a lantern out, so it's going to go Mega Nar for the second time this trade. And Origin. Realize they do not want to give up the lead they've built. They back away after a Nexus turret. Well, you still got three dragons for yourself. Wait two minutes for the next one. And a rocket flies by. Yeah, there it is again. <laughs> Gotta see it twice. I'm having deja vu, guys. At least it's not a black cat. It's a Jinx rocket. Right now, Origin, yeah. 7,000 gold in the lead, 8,000 gold in the lead, comfortable position. They haven't made those closing errors so far in the series that they were kind of being talked about in the earlier stages of the split. Perhaps they were just toying with their food, perhaps they just actually had legit closing issues, but so far it's been pretty textbook. Game 3, they fell behind to a skirmish composition, so they may want to be careful a little bit in that regard, but other than that, pretty, pretty well played, and yeah, some members stepping up as we always joke around, you know. So as an expected stepping up in playoffs, they did. 
historically been the case, and Krepa, you said it at the beginning of game one. And we all reiterated it, Origin and playoffs, a lot more focused, a lot more objective-based. And it's built them this, honestly, massive lead. Now the good thing for H2K, however, is as we see all the Wamna here being engaged upon, he's gonna drop. Lulex is watching that. Watching his teammate go down. He's flanking for a kick, but not even a super good pinball, I think, can save his game at this point. Uh, I'm gonna need to see whether or not Ryu can play bowling. Oh, the Arne gets not! The stun doesn't connect, but he will be able to escape. That is a massive flame chomper. Soaz is gonna go to Mini Nar shortly. Aggressive Valk forward into the Glacial Fisher. A three-man last breath. It does not do anything. We do see Origin grabbing one, grabbing two. The Nexus turrets are being focused by the Super Minions. Amazing is trying to push them down as well, and Hyanen will not be able to get more kills. H2K get aced. Origin, they were going to Stockholm. Now they're going to Stockholm in the finals. They will be facing the winner of Fnatic or UOL. 3-1 in their first LCS split. Yeah, fantastic performance. Team is, seems to be a little bit relieved, but overall very calm, collected, closing out of these games. Dropped one map, but a lot of people expected this overall. 3-1, superior seed coming to the playoffs. They had the bye, they had many, many weeks to prepare. P perhaps even just relax, get rid of the stress a little bit, you know, come without burning out into these playoffs, which is important if you're thinking about Worlds, because now the grind begins. Origin is this close, they haven't secured any seed. And in the finals, they have to wait to get that seed, otherwise they're going into the regional qualifier as they don't have sufficient points gathered so far in the split, but they're looking strong. And